Let's go. Coming up in this episode, we head back with the Nomad Boys for some great fishing and some really unlikely moments. Welcome to my fishing place, the place to be. This week, we're back with Nomad Sport Fishing Adventures up on Bly Reef. And on a trip like this, there are always a couple of standout moments. I think the first one has to be a big shout out to Shauno, who caught the third ever biggest GT on the Nomad Sport Fishing Adventures with a big 60 kegger. There's a bit of footage of him hauling in this giant monster. That's a monster. Oh! That's your 50 kegger right there. Oh, oh, look at it. And the next one had to be you, Big Red. You know, throughout the filming of this series too, I've had some awesome fishing moments. But I had one on Nomad that just blew them all out of the water. On this occasion, a beautiful time of the day, and we pull up onto the sand cave, and I just thought, I just want to cast, because everywhere on the Coral Sea, if you cast the lure, you seem to catch fish. And I remember the guys, you sort of hopped off the boat, and I thought, had a look over here, oh, I'll just cast that over here. So. I tie on the My Fishing Place lure and I cast it out once, okay, wind it back in, yep, fair enough. And I thought, another cast, and it must have only gone 10 metres. So it wasn't a cracking it cast. It wasn't a cracking cast, it wasn't a cracking place to cast, but all of a sudden <laughs> I get, whoa, 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 and I'm yelling out, guys, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, and pull it in, and I just, that comes off, you know, where the rocks are, and just, I see this wrasse and I'm just like, you are kidding me. And I was just cheering. There's some footage there somewhere I've got rotting on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I just, I bought in this wrasse and it seriously is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It was just, it was an emotional moment. Yeah, sit here like a freight train. It was probably only that big, but it was just a, such a fantastic fish. And I know there's been much bigger ones caught, but for me, on that sand cave. 100% mate, this is such a beautiful fish, look at it. Casting the least likely lure <laughs> with the worst possible cast, and I pull in a wrasse, and I have just never been so pumped. It wouldn't have mattered if I didn't catch the rest of the fish the whole trip. It was just so fantastic. And it was just so awesome that, you know, the guys had the drone going as well. well that's what and makes it so unlikely. Yeah. You, you've already described the unlikely circumstances, but our drone is in the air for probably what? Five minutes, Five minutes, ten minutes for the whole day, and it just so happens that the drone is in the air, and you can see the ras belt your lure oh. in the corner of the drone shot. It's got to be the flukiest thing in the history of mankind. <laughs> wrong lure, wrong spot, dud cast, but big red. Wait a minute. You nailed it. You said wrong lure, wrong cast. I would say. Right, right lure, right, right cast, I, right spot. I stand, I stand corrected. It was, it, it was, was a just great awesome. Cat. It, it was awesome, and that moment lives with me forever. So, I'm actually going to put this lure on the board. It will be the second one, but uh, that'll be a moment I never forget. I don't think so. How was it? Lee was screaming, and we're just like going, "Oh yeah, whatever." And I'm sort of wandering over. Next minute, I, I saw the shape, and I thought. 
surely not. What well, that can't be a rasin. <laughs> it was a rasin. That at that point I was like run down, trying to get some sneaky casts in, but catching a ras is one of those special species that you want to catch. And like everyone on that boat wanted to catch a ras. Have you ever caught one? I've got a few rasses, oh, but for those awesome. of you that haven't fished for them, they are an amazing fish to catch. And a lot of people try for a long time to catch their first ras. And the fact that you put it together, got it on the My Fishing Place lure, fantastic. Mate, put it there, big red. That was a win. So if you need to catch a wrasse, talk to me. I'll choose your place and I'll choose your lure. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after the break, a devastating loss, but maybe they'll break the drought. And one of the things that I love about places like Bly Reef is the variety of fishing that you can do. It's not just all about chasing big GTs, which is by far one of my most favorite forms of fishing. But the flats fishing in places like Bly Reef is really unbelievable at times. Now I know Big Red, you've got a couple of great fish up there on the flats. That's right, Daz. You know, I got a, a Maori sea perch. Oh, Maori sea perch. Oh, nice. I love them. Get a good picture of that. Oh, beautiful. I've got a beautiful red bass, and it's again, it's like you say, it's a different style of fishing. Cease to become bass. Yes! We're fishing probably 40 pound um, or 50 pound a lot of the time there. And again, you've got a decent sized red bass. He's come out of his hole, he's grabbed that lure. You've got to be pretty quick to make sure you keep him out of there. We got bricked a number of times there. Oh, that's one of my favourite forms of fishing is that flats fishing. It wasn't boring, we just, you drop them down and you, you almost, I'll say, this guaranteed a fish every time. A little thing called technique. Tell us about the technique. If you didn't get snapped off, you'd get a fish. Oh. And uh, I remember oh, that one, I caught that cod. And we oh brought this God. cod on board and we're going, Ew, what? I just wondered who on our boat had, I don't, you know, what? broke wind, we'll say broke wind. Oh, that was the stinkiest fish. And, but you know, well, what does that smell? <laughs> it smelled like Lee to begin with. <laughs> but then we realised it wasn't Lee, it was the oh, fish. And this cod just Absolutely, I'm sorry. Mark, the cameraman's going, oh, I need a better angle, better angle. I said, Mark, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> ah. They were all yelling at you, get that no, thing get off the Get it back bus. in the water. Toss it over. Oh, it stank. But, you know, just a variety of just, it was just, well, that was a ball too. Like, just lots of flats or something a bit different. But it was just great, great wow. fun. Wow. Leroy. Sick picky. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it it did cure a few issues as um oh, yeah. he's on. Oh yeah Poor Keza. There was a couple of days there where he just didn't get any GT. Uh, not going to land itself, you have to fight it. It won't swim to the boat, you have to pull it in. Oh, what happened? Good one. That's 20 kegs plus. Twice the size of the last one. Oh, the sad moment. Oh, oh, oh. Sad moment. Oh, defeated. You're not defeated. We are not defeated. No. We ain't defeated. That's the worst feeling. He lacked the necessary commitment and skill to hunt down the mighty GT. And after Kezra dropped a big GT, it, uh, the camera came up and the cameraman's comment was, how do you feel, Kezra? And the cameraman was lucky that he and the camera didn't end up in the ocean. If I big could have, I would have stabbed him in the face. <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> No Be honest, Keza. Be honest. There's nothing I can say that's appropriate for the footage. It's just all bad at this point. Oh, 
Oh, I, I caught a couple on the first day and I thought, yes. And then just two days went by without landing a fish and I hooked a couple solid, dropped them. Oh, I should quit. Retiring. But how good is it then when you hook one? When, yes, when you it. finally break the drought and you get one and oh, all you want is to get it in the boat. Hopefully. Touch the leader, get it in the boat, and it's like ambush level just explodes, and you've, you've broken the ground. It just is too good. Yes, 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 yes. You just know you're back. You're back. You're, you're back. back. Oh, Papa, that one was coming home with me, baby. Because I've got all my other ones on a mad scad, and then I really went on a popper. Got him on one of these black poppers. Just too good. Coming up after the break, a few different styles pull in some unusual catches. And of course, it wouldn't be a fishing trip without the full body retrieval. And I'm sure fishing those flats one day, Keza, what lure was it you're after? Oh, I don't know what lure it is, but I do know you're in the Coral Sea. You're fishing with expensive lure. I'm still doing a retrieval. Dazza, you may cut and run. <laughs> oh, I'm willing to swim. I was a little nervous about sharks, but went in, had a swim. It was beautiful. Oh, it was Water beautiful. It was awesome. I know, we weren't, I'm sure we weren't that far off a sand cave, and there's footage of it, but you dive in, and it was just, again, it's just that environment that you're in. It's just beautiful water. And the temperature was certainly oh, right for man, a swim. So good. Swim down. We all had a good snorkel. There was just, and even though we dived in the water, and you're looking down, seeing how am I not catching that fish? Because they are massive. <laughs> so that you know that was the other nice little part about the flats that I found was just that, just going for a swim, just being part of the whole thing. It was just amazing, and I just, again, just the variety, that deep jigging, you know, for GTs fishing on the flats, fishing the bombies and the wrecks, there really is so much. And I'm not sure it's trying to plug this trip, but as a place and as a destination, there is just so much to do. And as we've said before, what also makes a great trip is the people that you're on there with. We had a good crew out with us, heaps of fun. We had Nathan, Sean O, Mosha, Cam, and uh, they were heaps of fun. You get back after the end of the day's fishing, hang out with the boys, and uh, I just reckon that adds to the whole experience. They were great cats, weren't they? Good fun to hang around. Yeah, I think the boys on the other boat uh, destroyed a couple of rods and reels as they kept coming over to us and, hey, we need another rod, need another reel. And a little bit of competition. He pulled in the 60 kegger. We weren't overly happy with him <laughs> out fishing us, so uh, we just pulled up a little bit beside him, let him know that we uh, were not so impressed with him out fishing us. <laughs> and we actually met a nice American couple there who introduced us to the Whopper Plopper. The Whopper Plopper. And anyway, with this thing, basically he was just ripping it through the water and this little, little tail spins. It's like a funny sort of That's, spinnerbait. Really. Oh, mate, and it just rips a rooster tail through the water. <laughs> and it's just great. End of the day, you just sit back, you know, have a couple of drinks. It was just, it was just fantastic. And I think. Um, being on a ship like that, it just really enhances the whole experience. You know, we caught great fish, you know, we had a lot of fun, great meals, great accommodation, but the guides really knew their stuff, you know, and if you were a punter, this is your first time fishing ever, they, you know, everything you need to know they knew. You know, they told you how to cast. Master and commander of the fishing world. And they really do put in a lot of effort. You know, like, again, we're in the middle of nowhere, you just think there's going to be fish everywhere. So, no, that's yeah. not a city. So, why do we need to cast away from the boat? In case the fish aren't right. You know where we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, I'm with you on that. I'll go with that. I'll, I'll <laughs> But to catch those GTs, like Keza had, like that dry spell, like, yeah. you know, like, 
you can cast a lot before you hook up a, a, a decent sized GT. So those guides work so hard to put you in the right spot. They know the pressure edges, they know what they're, what they're doing. And that's so important up there that it doesn't matter where you are, you can be as remote as anything, but you still gotta find the right place where the fish are gonna be. They're not just everywhere, they're always, you know, there's certain bait, there's certain pressure edges, you've just gotta know that stuff, and that's what these guys know, and make it so much easier for you to catch fish. Coming up after the break, check out some of the gear we use. Some of the gear that we use on this style of fishing that's probably unique to this is the heavy dutiness of some of the gear. Like this is typical of the uh, reels we, we use up there, the Stella 18,000 with either 100, usually about 100 pound braid, sometimes 130 pound braid. Uh, that thing has up to 15 kilos of drag and often even that's not enough to stop them. And I've teamed that up with, and you don't need quite this necessarily expensive rod, but I've got a two piece carpenter um, rod that's specifically designed for popping, for big poppers um, and for large stick baits and it is an outstanding rod. In terms of poppers we use a lot of the Nomads with Chuck Norris, a great, a great uh, popper. Also some of the older style poppers, these mustard bombs. He's got the magic GT lure. It's truly magic. The good thing about Nomad is yeah. they had plenty of gear, even for, to start with I was finding it a bit tough chugging on those poppers there, so I put out a mad scad, which just has a bit different action. That was one of the lures I cleaned up on this one and a big yellow one. They were great and it's, you know, pulling them through and just getting that action working. I'd say the big one was the club. Yes. My fingers would have been destroyed without that, but it, it is, it's heavy gear and it's gonna take a punishing round when you're fishing with these blokes. Mm. When it's a bit choppier, I was, you know, having a bit of trouble in the first couple of days with these poppers. You know, like if you get a bit of a wave, it's skipping here and there, and that's where I really found, um, like Heather said, these Nomad Mad Scads, and also they had ones called Riptides that were a, a subsurface lure, and really, it was the same movement, but they weren't coming out of the water. And obviously, you know, the more time you lose in the water the more fish you catch. So they were great, and some of these little stick baits as well for the flats. It was just, you just know how tough your tackle has to be. And just making sure that the split ring's okay, your hooks look okay, even if they look okay, again, had a couple snap. And have a think about the reef that you're going to, the, what's gonna be there, um, because exactly that, like sometimes it might be the, the, the micro jigs, the soft plastics, other times it's poppers, stick baits, um, and the gear needs to match that as well. So having a good chat to the people you're going with will help you understand the gear that you need um, for the environment and for the style of fishing and for the fish you're gonna catch. Again, just a fantastic location, fantastic people, but in the end you go for the big fish, so, um, why don't you enjoy the rest of the show with us with just a few of these fine examples? Yeah, I want. Not a bad pick. That's a GT, boys. Woo, that's a GT.
Next episode, join Dazza and Big Red as they tackle the Burdekins.